Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So I'm back with another video, and this time it's my 2020 look at the BlackBerry Prib. Now, this may be a walk down memory lane for some of you. This may be something you've never even seen or heard of, but for me, it was nice to get my hands on one of these again. I actually went to the store the day they came off. I took the day off of work whenever this came out. Back in the day in 2015, you know, there were actual lines outside of stores whenever people wanted to buy things so like the new Samsung, the new iPhone. Well, I got there and there wasn't really anyone outside waiting for them. It was just me, but I was super happy about it because I walked right in and I got my brand new BlackBerry Priv, which I totally loved. And I still do like it. It has a revolutionary form factor. It's the first Android ever made by BlackBerry. And you've got the slider, which allows you to slide the screen up and you can get access to the physical keyboard, which touch sensitive. It's capacitive, just like the screen. And that was very, very cool back in 2015 and it's still nice and it got grandfathered into other devices like the BlackBerry Mobile Key 1 and the Key 2. So that's where it got its roots. But outstanding performance back in 2015. It was great. It had a, two, a Quad HD Plus display, 3 gigabytes of RAM, a 3400 milliamp battery, 18 megapixel camera on the back. So it had a lot of really good things going on for it, especially on the hardware side. Plus it was very innovative. So let's go ahead and dive in and go ahead and take a look at the BlackBerry Priv in 2020. All right, so first things first, you're probably wondering how well the BlackBerry Priv holds up in the year 2020. Well, hardware wise and physically, I think that it's held up pretty well. Now this is not a phone that I've had for five years since it came out but it is five years old. It does seem to be working pretty well. Uh, the speakers are still really good. The display is still nice and bright. It's got that uh, Quad HD Plus resolution, which was really nice for 2015. Um, the only real hangups I have are, you know, the vibration motor is not the best in the world, and that's just one of the things that was already a problem with the Priv way back in the day, and it's because of the sliding design. So since it's these two pieces that kind of float on top of each other, the vibration kind of expands a little bit outside the like the area that you're using it so it can do like the v -v -v thing when you're doing you know, like stuff that has a lot of vibration uh, other than that the only other complaint that I have is like it's a little on the slow side and that's just opening up YouTube Creator Studio so open that up or here we'll hit Boom Beach and these are not overly intensive things but it still takes a little bit for them to load now that's fine and dandy if you don't mind because once they load they work perfectly fine but you know compared to to nowadays it is a little dated so that's probably the biggest complaint that I have and the last thing here I'll go ahead and open up Twitter you can see so this is to, to open up Twitter now as you can see once you get in there it's all fine and dandy but you know loading it up is a little bit more than I would really you know like in the year 2020 <clears throat> And mostly that's just due to the processor, the old operating system, and the amount of memory because it has three gigabytes of RAM in it. Um, otherwise, though, I've been very happy with it. Screen looks nice. Everything looks good. Sounds good. Uh, it still gets hot. So if any of you had one of these before and you noticed that it used to get crazy hot all the time, it still does that. Battery life is not the most exceptional in the world, but still it has like 3,400 milliamp batteries. So not too bad, but you know, this comes back from a time whenever the hardware and the software was not as forgiving when it came to battery life. So overall though, yeah, I, I think it's held up pretty well. And if you're not worried about security concerns or you don't mind waiting for some things to load, it's still a very viable phone if it's something that you've held on to and that you want to continue using. All right, so as we continue our stroll down memory lane, here's a look at the beautiful and fantastic BlackBerry Prip. Now you can see it's got the original BlackBerry logo on the top there. It does have kind of large bezels on it, but it does have the big front facing speaker down on the bottom, which is very powerful even still today. Now it does have three gigabytes of RAM. It's got a 5.4 inch display with Quad HD plus resolution. It has a Snapdragon 808 eight core processor in it and a 3410 milliamp battery. Now it does have an 18 megapixel camera on the back, which you saw there and it's still very capable even today in 2020. Now here's a look at the defining characteristic of this phone, which is the sliding keyboard. Now, as I demonstrated, it does have the touch sensitive capability, so you can control the operating system with it. 
when you're on the home screen. And then when you're within apps, you can use it to scroll up and down and all of that fancy stuff. So this really did carry over well into the Key 1 and the Key 2 phones as they came out later. And as you can see, even five years later, it still holds up pretty well. Now, it does have a 2 megapixel front-facing selfie camera, which is capable of 720p video. Not the greatest in the world, but you'll see here later as I do a camera demonstration that it's still capable of taking some decent photos. Now, it only has Bluetooth 4.1. It's got 32 gigabytes of internal storage, but it has a dedicated SD card slot on the top so you can add additional storage. Now, it did originally come with Android 5.1, but it was subsequently upgraded to Android 6.0 Marshmallow. All right, so here's the selfie action I was talking about. I did go ahead and take a picture. So this is inside with some you know, semi-decent lighting. So I took a couple of selfie photos. This was when I was out walking around the block the other day. I decided to take a couple of pictures just so you could see. And then there's a photo with the primary shooter. And it has really good color saturation. It's very natural looking. I took this kind of later on in the evening. But let's go ahead and take another picture real quick. So uh, I've actually got something here on the table. I'll go ahead and snap a picture of it and you can see what it looks like. But even looking at it on the screen here, of course, got my YouTube plant, <laughs> going ahead and taking a picture with you know, some ideal lighting because I do have my lighting kit set up right now. You can see what this looks like and bam, it actually looks really good. It handles you know the shiny, glossy object well with the little pot and then even with the more waxy details with the gradient on the, the fake plant itself. I feel like it does take pretty good pictures, so I wasn't disappointed. Now that right there was just to show off the shutter speed. It does have a little bit of a slow delay when it comes to the shutter for taking pictures, but overall the exposure and the contrast and everything that goes along with it looks nice. Now I wanted to show off the gaming performance. Now it's kind of hit or miss. This is Mario Kart uh, for the Android phone of course. and it runs okay. It's playable. So I don't want to say that it's not playable, but as you're playing it, it kind of gets choppy as there's more action on the screen. So I don't know if that's just because of the poor performance of the 808 processor. I mean, it is five years old. I wouldn't expect it to run this at peak efficiency because it's certainly not a RAM issue, but yeah, you can see it does kind of lag and, and shutter every once in a while. So it's not that it's unplayable, but it does have decent enough performance if you do want to go ahead and play games on it it's quite capable in some instances. Now, I mean, you're not going to be able to play Fortnite or anything crazy like that, but if you want to play some Mario Kart or some Boom Beach, you're good to go. Now, I wanted to show this off. If you used a BlackBerry 10 phone, and this was back in the age where everybody was making these side scroll runner games, this is Kiwi Wonder, and I totally love this game, and I was really disappointed when I moved over to Android from BlackBerry 10 because I lost the ability to play it. I still have my BlackBerry Z10 and I would go back and play it sometimes, but they have it available on Android now. So if you enjoyed this game on BlackBerry 10, you can certainly enjoy it now. All right, so here's a sound test. I got some copyright free music on here and I did mention earlier that it does have a big powerful speaker on here. As you can tell, you know, when I put this up close to the microphone, it really does translate over well. And it has great volume, it has great clarity. So from a media and entertainment perspective, or li just listening to music, this is still a really solid phone when it comes to doing that stuff. So if you want to listen to some Spotify, watch some Netflix, or if you want to set this down on the kitchen counter while you make some dinner and fire up you know, YouTube mu music or whatever, it works out really, really well. Now, a BlackBerry review would not be a BlackBerry review if we didn't talk about the keyboard. So BlackBerry 10 had a fantastic keyboard back whenever 20, you know, 2015 was around. Uh, there weren't a whole lot of great Android keyboards, so it was very frustrating to type on them versus a physical keyboard or the iPhone experience. So BlackBerry ported over their keyboard skin to use with their user interface on this overlay of Android 5 and Android 6. You could swipe back, you could still do the, the flick typing, so you can see the little words, that the suggested words that hover over the letters. So that worked out really well. Keyboard was great. And then you can slide up the screen and then you can get access to the physical keyboard. So you can use both of them. And this is one of the things that people really love about BlackBerry. And it's one of the things that they loved about the BlackBerry Priv because you could use both of them. It was the best of both worlds. And you didn't have to sacrifice you know, the overall screen size of the phone by having a permanently installed physical keyboard. So this was a great compromise. And if somehow they do make another BlackBerry one day, I really wouldn't mind seeing this form factor come back. I think it would make a lot of people happy. All right, so 
The last thing I want to show off is the security update stuff. Like I said, it's been a long time. It's still running Android 6.0, and the last security update was in October of 2017. So we're talking over two years since there's been a security update, which is a concern, but overall, the phone still functions perfectly fine. All right, so that's it on my video of the BlackBerry Priv in 2020. As you can see, it's still usable, but it's a little dated at this point in time. I, the battery life just isn't phenomenal. It still gets hot and it overheats with that Snapdragon 808 processor. I, there were a lot of good things going for it at the time, but there were some hangups, which are still very evident today. Of course, it looks great. The form factor is very unique. And then, you know, you've got the physical keyboard and all that. So it's the best of both worlds whenever it comes to BlackBerry. And a lot of people really would like to see this form factor come back. I would as well. And it's funny to me because... I used to think that this keyboard was so small and so difficult to type on, but after using the Key 1, the Key 2, and the Key 2 LE, the size is really not that far off. It's just the type of keyboard that it is, but overall, it works very well. It's something that's still usable. The only concerns I really would have are the security updates and all that stuff, but as far as fit, form, and function, if you want to hang on to it a little bit longer, it'll still work if it's something that you enjoy. So that's all I've got on my video of the BlackBerry Priv. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully it was a nice little trip down memory lane, some nostalgia. And as you can see, it's still, still kicking, still alive. So that's all I've got. If you got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you can get updates on the latest and greatest. And as always, I appreciate you being here. And I'll see you guys next time.